Alright, let's get that guru. How's that label facing? <laughs> um, okay, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Week three. I'm Ritzker. He's Pace. Um, again, in play live podcast. Uh, if you haven't already, go to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, smash the like button, follow us, and uh, check out the website for the free webinar that uh, explains who we are and what we do. Uh, just a quick recap, Pace, last week we talked about money management. I know we got some good feedback from the community, a couple of comments, DMs, things like that, sharing some stories. If you've got something that you want to share or talk about or submit for a future podcast or throughout the week, feel free to reach out. You know where to find us. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear if, uh, if anyone had some success with what we talked about, um, you know, share some struggles or, or positives that came out of that, right? One of our biggest reasons why people actually cancel their subscriptions at InPlay Live is because they'll actually say, I loved, I got amazing value, yeah. I loved the product, but I couldn't manage my money on the side and I made too many poor bets. Totally. And we have to encourage those people. We're like, you know what, see you later because they have a problem. Yeah. Right? So if, if you, I don't want you to share your problems with us. Um, that's not what we're here. We're not a gambling uh, helpline. <laughs> but if yeah. you have had questions, comments, problems, concerns, issues relating to money management or any of our other topics, or if there's a specific topic that you guys want us to cover, definitely drop us a comment and uh, obviously hit the subscribe button. Yeah, I love when on the live sessions you're like, I have nothing right now. Do yeah. not take anything. If you see, <laughs> yeah. Don't show me pistols because I don't have anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's classic. And once again, also, uh, you'll see Guru in the shot. Not a sponsor, but yeah. feel free to uh, connect us with anyone from Guru. Would love to hear from them. Um, <laughs> this week, we actually have a pretty cool, uh, cool session this week. Um, we've got our first guest speaker. Who would have thought? Three weeks in, we've already got people knocking on the door, begging to come on the podcast. <laughs> no, but we've got uh, Kenneth from, is he from Pennsylvania? He's from Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania, coming on shortly, and he's going to talk, he's a pro, um, about some of the books and how, what's out there, pros and cons of some of his favorite books. He's, uh, I mean, he's, cool. he's talking about the sports betting landscape in the United States. Yeah, and uh, he's Pennsylvania, New Jersey, so he's right on that fringe of where a lot of things are happening, laws are changing, things are going down, so that should be pretty cool. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about um, building up your books, talking about um, access to different books, making sure that you have a portfolio of books. One of the things you talk about is making sure that you have the tools to deploy sports value investing, and with that starts with your tool belt, which is the books you are on, the books you have built accounts up on, and what you can do within that realm of finding value wagers, right? I think the, the, the broad topic is really the landscape of sports betting, what our options are and, you know, how it all really works and how to be successful in that standpoint. So if you're a member at InPlay Live, there's a whole chapter on, you know, setting up your peak environment and yeah. setting up an infrastructure for success. <clears throat> and infrastructure goes way beyond your sports book, Right. You can see some of my setup in the background of our podcast every single week. This is a part of your infrastructure. We're not going to be talking about that specifically today, but what we're going to be talking about is the sports betting landscape and how that impacts being a sports value analyst and your success. So, I mean, you we've been friends forever. So if we rewind the tape, you know, a decade, right? Um, so 11, 12 years ago, this is probably the time... When I'm starting to make my first sports bets, I'm um, a big time poker player. I love betting on uh, betting on and playing poker, and that's how I paid for my university tuition. But I hated the game. Um, I just liked that I could make money from doing it. Uh, but it was a total grind. And I remember um, walking to Seven Eleven and getting a piece of paper. <laughs> and Seven Eleven's not a casino, Sp right? Is it sports action? Is sports it, action. That's what you want to bet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports action. You want to bet? Uh, we're in British Columbia, Vancouver. So going to 7-Eleven, which is just our corner store, so that could be AM, PM for, our, for, for you, and taking a piece of pencil, or sorry, taking a piece of paper and a pencil and actually physically scratching in uh, the parlay that you were making, and you had to parlay two with, picks. Yeah, with the DGENs doing the Kino slips and the and the and like all that other stuff, right? The horse picks and it, all that. Exactly, yeah. right? And you had the option <laughs> to take an NFL football team by... Uh, within four, four points, points yeah. on either side of the game or either of the two teams to win by more than four points. And I'll never forget, <laughs> I took 
<laughs> the New Orleans oh, Saints, God. and I parlayed it with the San Francisco 49ers. And being a poker player, you're so used to um, putting a lot of money in to try to buy pots and, and overpower people and, and that kind of thing. And I will never forget placing $50 and being like, what? this this returns me 150 for these two heavy favorites to to win this and I placed it and I won and it was like the greatest thrill ever but fast forward to the 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 betting landscape the sports betting landscape today right and we have the ability to bet on elections grammys um alien sightings literally yeah, uh the, e the moon landings <laughs> esports e um ufc and then of course like every single major sport and that's all pregame and then you jump to what you can do live and you look at technology today and you're like oh my god like the fact that number one we can do this is so cool the fact that you can do it from your own home is even cooler and then you look at the fact that you can make money on it and that i consistently do that and you're learning to consistently do that it's unbelievable like yeah. it truly is unbelievable what technology has done to the world of sports yeah and you look at it and you see a goal scored in, say, the NHL, and it will literally say on the betting site that Sidney Crosby just scored a goal in real time. Like, the technology is incredible. It's reading the players' numbers as they're going down the ice. Yeah. They know who has the puck, they know who has the ball, everything. And yeah. it's incredible. They know that someone hit a fault serve in Paris in real time on a tennis match that you're betting on, and you're betting on that point. Like, crazy shit. Yeah. And the UK has kind of been the front runner for this. They've been the ones that have been doing it the longest. And obviously in Canada, we're super lucky because we get to use their systems, their infrastructure, their books. And then you go to the United States and you think about what I just talked about. You know, over a decade ago, taking a piece of paper, taking a pencil and selecting your wagers. Mm -hmm. And you look at the United States and you go, you had to be in Atlantic City or you had to be in Las Vegas to place a wager period end of story a legal wager right okay yeah. right let's stay from the, let's stay from the lines no but now. a legal wager so this is a really cool stat in mm -hmm. 2018 there was roughly 400 billion dollars wagered on sports in the united states only okay 97 percent of it was illegally wagered right so it's happening and the way those were done is a phone call to a bookie a text to a bookie you yeah. know um, maybe some offshore sites like the ones we're referring to. <laughs> but anyways, you fast forward to today and you look at the gambling landscape in the United States and you go sports bet, sorry, sports betting landscape in the United States and you've got Las Vegas, Nevada that's controlling everything. And they've got this old school system where you get that piece of paper and it's one of the funnest things oh, in the world so for fantastic. us because yeah. it's a vacation feel for us. But from the standpoint of being a professional sports better in the United States, you have to move to Vegas and you have to bet pregame. And then, you know, while that's going on and they've got control of everything, look what's happening in the rest of the world and on the side of this unbelievable technology that's not only caught up, it's superseded it to make not only that obsolete, but ter a terrible system. An yeah. old, bad, shitty, piece of shit system where now Nevada's going holy shit look at the rest of the United States not only are they doing better than us but our entire industry is being threatened because why would someone come to Nevada now to play sports bets oh, there's a million different reasons right. to go to Vegas yeah. but why would you go to Vegas to play sports bets why yeah give me one reason that I don't think there if if you guys have a reason for why you would place a sports bet in Nevada I'd love to hear it because you've caught a sharp line I mean there's so many different books out there now right yeah so for me personally I look at that and I go okay when it comes to my personal infrastructure and my situation I need to expose myself to the greatest number of opportunities to create the greatest amount of success and this, when I talk about the United States and the $400 billion wagered in 2018, that's mostly illegal money, and that's just the United States. Look at the rest of the world. Bet365 has the highest paid CEO on the planet, right? She took close to a $400 million salary in 2019. That's mine. She's, she's worth like 12 point something billion. Um, the industry makes money. It is massive. 
right? So on a transactional basis, it might be one of the top uh, industries in the world. Yeah. Like when you look at money's moving, like money flow. Yeah. It's got to be way up there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously they're making money, and that's great because that's what keeps me in business is making sure that that industry continues to remain profitable. Right. But on the flip side of it, for me, I need to make sure that I'm exposing myself to the the greatest amount of opportunities, right? Yeah. And you you see it, right? It doesn't take long for you to look at one book, get familiar with one book while you're watching that one game, seeing how the numbers change uh, as the game goes on based on the different circumstances of that particular sport and game that are happening. But then when you pull up that second book and you see, wow, these numbers are not the same, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where all these strategies start to be born of creating value, finding value, uh, arbitrage systems, um, all that kind of stuff. So... Um, I look at it and I go every single year, every single season, what book has integrated uh, new in play uh, markets that I can find value on? Right. And how do those numbers relate to all the other books that are out there? Yeah. And that's really, I mean, that's really what it's all about. And it also diversifies you as a sports value analyst to make sure that your success is not tied to one system. Totally, right? Right. You uh, first-hand experienced that this past weekend, right? You said, hey, I'm stuck in this situation where I need to explore some new books. And you actually uncovered some new opportunities within those books. But um, a prime example that you have to constantly be searching for those edges. Otherwise, you're going to miss out. 100%. Or you're going to pigeonhole yourself. And, right? and one book, one year, you're like, okay, that, that book's no good for me this year. You open it up again a couple of years later, and you're like, "Wow, look at all the look at look at all this!" Because it's such a big industry that's so profitable. So these companies are saying, "How can we continue to capitalize on this?" Right? Yeah. And then in that, how can we continue to capitalize on what they're opening themselves up to? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, bringing it back to to people who are kind of building again, like the idea here is a building community of people who are looking for opportunities within these books, right? So if I'm a new person opening a new book, can I just like go at it right away? Or should I, you know, maybe think about building some experience or some credibility with that book first? Because I think that's something that we've run into a little bit with people who are just sort of thinking they can just go to town on a book and they're not going to understand it. So when technology meets sports value investing, they're going to kind of see a bit of a pattern there where you're thinking, um, hey, I'm going to take advantage of these guys, and they're thinking, uh, not so fast, right? Right. So speak to that a little bit from the angle of being a, a value investor who's exploring a new book and trying to find or build a rapport with the books as you're kind of also looking to make money off of them. Right. Do you well, know what I mean? Well, the thing is, and this dates back to like the mob running Vegas in like the 1940s and 1950s. Um, casinos don't like winners. Totally. We talked about Dana White last week. We talked about Phil Ivey. Phil exactly. Ivey, right? Right. They don't care who the hell you are. Even if you bring in money, Yeah. get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, casinos don't like winners. Um, they love a winning story to market their product. Right. But when you consistently win. They like it when your mom pulls a slot and hits 50 grand, not when yeah. you come in for seven nights a week and continually pound them for money, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're card edging like Phil Ivy, it's not going to last long. You know, they cut you off pretty quick, and then you're not welcome not only there but at other places. Right. So when it comes to sports betting, um, one of the awesome things about it is that if you are on the winning side of wagers more often than not, oftentimes you're betting against the public. Yeah. Oftentimes, right? When you're betting against the public, what you're helping Vegas and the sports books do is mitigate their risk, right? So if 90% of the public is on the Dallas Cowboys when they're playing the Jets, and you're the guy that comes in and maybe grabs a sharp line on the plus side of the Jets, um, while you may win consistently over time from doing that, you're also helping the sports books in regards to risk mitigation and getting some money in on the side that they're more exposed to mm -hmm. their losses on. Right. Right. So, but from that standpoint as well, um, there's certain books that will let professionals continue to play at mm -hmm. and they market themselves that way. Like Pinnacle being one of those sports books yeah. where, um, you can make as much money as you want on Pinnacle and they will keep you there forever for that exact reason that I just said. 
and other sports books, they will they'll limit you. They'll say we don't want you betting here anymore, but we, they'll say it in a way that is, you know, legally sound and and non discriminatory. When so you still can typically tend to wager at those books, but they just make the amounts that you can wager um, irrelevant. So right. you might have a max wager of like fifty cents on an in play market. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I think is a great topic for an entirely other podcast yeah. of how we can, you know, keep breaking the books and what the strategies are there. And of course, that's a chapter uh, in the course at In Play Live as well. But I think on that same note, you're talking about infrastructure. One of the things that I get from a lot of amateur sports bettors is I can't deposit. Uh, my bank doesn't let me deposit or my credit card doesn't let me deposit or this sports book. Um, Oh, uh, they, they tried to verify my documents. Uh, they wanted to see my driver's license or my passport and a proof of uh, address. Um, I'm not going to play there. These or, are ABCs. You just got to take well, it, like, right? Like, if, if, if you have the expectation where you go, I'm going to open one sports book and I'm going to be a successful sports better. And if that's the one that's most comfortable for me, you're, you're just not, it's just not going to work because... You're not comparing it with anything else. You're not taking the time to make sure you have the infrastructure for success, meaning, you know, the right deposit methods, whether that's using a number of different services that are available to you, but making sure that you go create an account yeah. there or yeah. have access to them, uh, you know, that kind of stuff where you're not letting this tiny little hurdle get in the way of your success. Yeah. And I think that's from an infrastructure standpoint getting as many books set up as possible, getting verified, putting those documents in, putting the time in to make sure that you are that person. You're not someone else. There's tons of money laundering in this industry. Yeah. You cannot blame a sports book for trying to prove that you are you. And good, because then you, you know, if you, if and when you win some money, you'll actually get paid, <laughs> right? Precisely. What, you want someone who doesn't know you, who you don't know, like no verification. Precisely. Letting money float around in space. No, that's not great, right? Precisely. And that's exactly it. You want them to verify you. You want them to know that it is in fact you. So that when it comes, push comes to shove, you have a legal case to get your money. Yeah. You know, worst case scenario. Right. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, right? But yeah, but yeah. but I mean, yeah. I mean, with that said, there's new books coming out every year, and I think this brings us to giving Kenny a call and uh, talking specifically about the landscape of the United States. So yeah. Kenny Huber, uh, I'm gonna give him a, a ring right now. Um, um, it's just dialing. The guy's a complete pro. He's been around for years and years and years. Kenny. Kenny, welcome. Just one second, hey, buddy. Hey. Just one second. Sure. What's up, Kenny? Hey, how you doing? Never been better, buddy. Thanks for joining us, man. You are the uh, Absolutely. first and hopefully not the last guest on the InPlay Live podcast. <laughs> okay. Hopefully we can have you back one day and be like, hey, remember that time like, a few years ago you uh, you joined us? And uh, it's a good story. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I'd be happy to add some information. What were you guys looking for? So, Kenny, um, today's topic is all about the sports betting landscape, really globally, but I think that the forefront of what's going on in the world when it comes to relevant sports betting news is all happening in the U.S. of A. Am I wrong? Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a, uh, a great opportunity for, uh, for U.S. bettors, I, I think, because a lot of the sports books are new. Um, some of them are coming from the UK and some of them are just brand new and fresh. Um, and of course the ones from like the UK, like bet three, six, five that, that you're real familiar with, um, and everything, they have definitely have the sharpest lines I've noticed, um, where, um, like other books like Fox bet is very, very new to the, the marketplace. And some of their lines are just ridiculously weak and they just, they don't really have a handle on, on live betting. Um, especially at like the end of football games and everything, and you can find some really, really weak opportunities. So, um, guys, when Kenny they're also vying for, for... go ahead, Sorry, go, go ahead, Kenny, go ahead, man. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and and also with um, the U.S. books are, are so dying for for you for uh, for cut for customers that they're slower to limit accounts. Um, they're also offer a tremendous amount of promos. Um, I, uh, I have a friend that, um, that's what he, he primarily just signs people up, 
um, and he makes three thousand dollars a person. He gives them five hundred dollars. He funds everything. Put you know sucks up all the promos and and makes like three thousand dollars a person. He made sixty thousand the past couple of months just signing you know a bunch of people up. He owns a bar. He does it with his patrons that come into the bar. He does it with his bartenders and and everything. So he's just making money off the promos just because they're dying for our business. Um, that they're giving all these crazy promos. I that's not something that I get into, um, but. But it's uh, it's kind of amazing, you know. Like you know, DraftKings gives a thousand dollars to everybody that signs up. Um, that's so it's, crazy. It's, uh, it's kind that's of that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. But I mean, that's huge because a lot of the guys we've been chatting with in the states have been struggling, or at least to find multiple books. Right? DraftKings has emerged as a big one. Well, I think um, I think that's like a really good topic. So Kenny's talking about like soft or weak lines, and Kenny like we're not going to go too much into your background personally, but Kenny's just a, he's a professional sports better, right? So he knows as soon as he sees value, he, he recognizes it the second he sees it, uh, and is able to exploit it over time, uh, with, with sports betting, obviously. Yeah. So one of the biggest complaints that we get at in play live in particular is people will be like, Oh, we don't have that exact market that I'm referring to on one specific wager. And then they don't have the ability to recognize where that other value right. exists on their specific book. So, Kenny, I'm not asking you to give away the farm in any way, shape, or form. But I think what we'd right. love to know about is what are some of your – what are the books you're using in the United States? And why are you using them without giving away uh, the golden eggs, right? Sure, sure. I mean, to, to me, everything is all about having um, a variety to, to look at and everything. So let me just show you – I'm kind of my my setup here. Oh, wicked. so I don't know if you can. Yeah, we can see, see it. I <laughs> okay, uh, love that. But yeah, so I um, so basically I have a, a 65 inch um, 4K TV hooked up to uh, a, a laptop that has a 4K display. So I some of the value I don't always even see, but it's kind of the numbers are telling me it. In that I have six different books up, all looking at a particular market, and sometimes there's just an outlier. So like. Say DraftKings has this this bet at minus eight hundred, and FanDuel has it at minus a thousand, and FoxBet only has it at minus one fifty. Well, I know, like I, most of the time, I know it anyway. Especially like in a football game, um, this uh, last night's game unfortunately went the wrong way for me. Um, but uh, FoxBet had a bet that was minus two hundred that the other books had at minus nine hundred, minus a thousand. Um, just so happens that there was a fumble and a fluke play at the end of the game. I lost the bet last night, but it was a bet that, you know, 19 times out of 20, I'm going to win that bet, um, and I'm only laying, you know, minus one, minus 150 odds in that case um, on that bet where where uh, where normally it would be I should have been laying much higher um, odds. So, um, but it's it's nice to just have a variety, and then if you can see the the difference in the in the odds, um, especially like in that. That four and five minutes to go, where a lot of the a lot of the more intelligent books like three six five, they start pulling their lines and they don't even offer odds in those times. Yeah. Where some of these U.S. books, they're they're just so new to it, they just don't know that they shouldn't be offering lines at, when they, you know during certain times, and they, and they are and at ridiculous at ridiculous prices for for what the, the well, true odds are. That, that like number. what you're describing right now is precisely what I talk about in being in such a unique opportunity because if I rewind the tape for me personally and I think about the amount of times over the last decade where I have opened up a book that I was brand new at, I looked at the numbers and I went this is too good to be true, but it actually is true. And how yeah. much those books have corrected today. So I go look at those markets right. today and you're talking about how smart bet three, six, five lines are. And Betway does the same thing where you see at the end of a hockey game, for example, where there's 10 minutes left and all the numbers are pulled. They're doing that because they have been hit so unbelievably yeah. hard yeah. by people like Kenny, like yourself now and like me in the past where we have shown them that what they were doing was statistically wrong over time. And when it comes to the United States in particular, whether you're in Arkansas where you're still doing the paper slip thing with your local lottery, which they've just allowed, or whether you're in Pennsylvania or Colorado where now they have a lot of these, these live books, you're in a position where all of these new books 
have come or are coming. And like you said, Kenny, they're competing for your business. They're giving people three grand to sign you up as a referral. Like they are fighting tooth and nail to get you to gamble there. And again, they're not limiting you because, and these, they've got these lines that are softer than Charmin, right? Like this is exactly my point when it comes to people that are in the United States and the sports betting landscape in regards to what an unbelievable opportunity is at their forefront. So if you are in the United States and you are in a sports betting situation where you are currently trying to figure it out and you open up the books and you go, oh, we don't have the same line that they have in the UK or we don't have the same line that they have in Canada, figure it out. Yeah. Right? Figure it out. And that's what we do at InPlay Live. We're here to help. And to Kenny's yeah. story point, if you don't have those multiple screens in front of you, there's no way you see that. Even if you're clicking from tab to tab, you might miss that because it right. goes away like this, right? So having right. your setup, having access to multiple screens or, or whatever it is, a split screen, that's huge, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I used to I used to bring a laptop and I had like little monitors I could plug into it um, before I got like all fully set up into this. And I used to go to like a Buffalo Wild Wings because they had all the, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, the waiters and the waitresses used to look like I had five heads because I got the laptop and all these screens and everything. I was like, I can't do this that, you know, next season. And I, I bought all the TVs. So I have my, my room looks like a sports book basically now. That's but, awesome. uh, but yeah, the, um, but yeah, the, the, the multiple screens and, and multiple, you know, you have, you have to have multiple sources. Yeah. Um, especially like I, especially with basketball and football, like just everything. It's just the more the more books, the better. Um, the more options that you have. I, I, whenever a new one opens, or there's news of a new one opening, it's like there's one that opened in Colorado, and they have plans to expand to New Jersey and Indiana. Um, Sportsbetting.com, I think it's called. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And when I open an account with them, it's gonna be like Christmas morning. And what can I? How can I exploit this this new sports book? Yeah. Um, for for whatever I can do. Exactly. Right. But yeah, it's cool. It's a it's a fun growing market. What's your uh, What's your favorite sport to bet on, Kenny? Uh, definitely football. Definitely. Football. I made my first bet when I was in sixth grade. Fifty dollars. <laughs> diehard Eagles fan, but I I bet I. I thought Joe Montana was going to destroy the Eagles that day. I was right about fifty dollars on the, oh, on the Niners and. And the rest was history. They but, didn't uh, hang you for treason in, in Philly there? <laughs> I don't think they like that, I, I, did I they? Bet, I bet with my head, not with my heart. I also had the nine, the, uh, the Steelers this past weekend, minus eight and a half live, and they ended up winning by nine. But, um, so, but, the, uh, but yeah, I, I bet with my head, not with my heart. Right on. Smart man. Smart right man. on. That's rule number one. I didn't play yeah, live. You've covered that one in your rule uh, number one. Yeah. yeah. Forget your favorites. You're right? no. You're only a fan of your wallet. All right, Kenny. Anything you want to add, buddy? No, no. Uh, it was a uh, like pleasure uh, signing up with you. Uh, you know, a couple months ago, I've enjoyed the uh, the whole experience. Uh, but uh, but yeah, play live has been been great for me. Awesome. Appreciate that, Kenny. Appreciate you coming on here. Hopefully, we can get you back on here again. Um, yeah. Super appreciate your time. Cheers, cool. buddy. Absolutely. Take care. Cheers, Kenny. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the whole point of, of, of all of that is just to really show number one, um, it doesn't matter where you live, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter where you live as long, so long as you have these books in your area, they don't, you don't need to have the same books that I have and vice versa. You might not be able to make as much as I can because of the books that are available in your area, but there are always opportunities regardless of where you live. If you, you get to a certain point where you can open up a sports book and you go, it's a brand new book. You've never looked at it before and you go, there's opportunities. Yeah. Or you go, this book sucks. And you but, e- <laughs> but even then, I still think that you can find something. Yeah, totally. Right? And it's like you apply the principles, you apply the strategies, you apply the money management. There's going to be something in there for you, right? Exactly. Um, you, there's books that you use for one wager, right? Um, and actually, his story made me think of you were hitting that uh, in the game last night. Didn't you hit a, a massive touchdown bet on... On one team, yeah, that wasn't available somewhere else. Like, yeah, we hit a twelve to one touchdown at the end of the yeah. game last night. Yeah, and it was like three to one at what I was looking at. Yeah, so you know that's that's just and and that that book that book is uh, mm-hmm. what's called the Cami Odds System. Yeah, and they're massive. Yeah. they are DraftKings, Bet Rivers, uh, Unibet, Leo, Cosmo, Eight 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 Sport, 
um, Mr. Green. I'm missing so many. Yeah. Um, they're in the state. They're definitely DraftKings in the states, and <clears throat> Unibet's in the state. Bet Rivers is in the states. But I'm just saying that odds provider. Yeah. That odds provider is oh, uh, uh, Barstool Sportsbook. What do you call the the generic website builder that starts with a W? Uh, like Wix or Wix or, or GoDaddy or where, yeah, you know where they build the platform. It's basically like that, right? They've got all the same betting algorithms backed into just different. Yeah, and, and then the the, the the it's cut and paste betting sites basically. Right? It's a, the the betting the betting site is a third party. Yeah, they're paying Cami to provide yeah. the odds to us, and then they brand it how they want yeah. to brand it. So what's awesome about that is if you did get limited at one. You still have those same odds and that same infrastructure yeah. across, and you just pick up where you left off. All, right? Yeah, exactly. All yeah. these different platforms, and like I said, they're in the United States, yeah. right? So we had U.S. members last night all hit this twelve to one touchdown with me live streaming as I advised them to do yeah. so. Right? That's wicked, right? That's and I mean, just that wager, like uh, that pays for. If you lost every other wager in the game, it pays for it. Obviously, we didn't. We we won a bunch of money in the live stream last night, but that that's um. That's exactly what it's all about. Huge takeaway. And how sick is it that he's just got his fucking setup ready to go? Oh, six, yeah, yeah, Five yeah. inch. He's got six screens. Like, yeah. True pro, right? Yeah. Um, but it goes to show you, right? He said it. That was like the first thing he said without even being prompted is like, you got to have access to seeing these things in front of you. Yeah. Right? Which is massive. So Well, there is there is an unfreaking <clears throat> believable scene in Billions. And uh, what's the lead character? Axe. Bobby Axelrod. Yeah. Damien Harris. Uh, uh, Damien Harris, right? Yeah, I th- yeah, I'm not good with Bob, actors' names. Bobby Axelrod. Yeah, yeah Bobby yeah, Axelrod, right? And he's sitting at the track, and the track's empty. There's no one there. He's got his feet kicked up, and his lawyer comes to visit him, and you know, he asks him why the hell he's there. And he tells him about how his success in the stock market all stemmed from how he looked at numbers at the track. Right. And one of the biggest things, the biggest takeaway of the message that he says in this huge monologue, and it's just one of the best, if you like anything to do with sports betting, this might be, and people, one of the uh, posts at In Play Live this week was, what are your favorite sports betting yeah. films? If you have enjoyed a sports betting film ever in your life, this is probably the single greatest scene relating to betting I've ever watched. So it, we'll it, post that after. We'll, we'll post, a link, we'll post a link to the yeah. billions. We'll say the episode and the, the timestamp. Yeah. But he says, and this is what makes it so amazing for me, right? This is why I love it so much, is he said he looks at the track and he says in order to find success, he stopped watching what was going on there. And he points at the track. And I started watching what was going on there. And he points up at the numbers board and how they're moving over time when people are wagering on the, yeah. the different horses. Yeah. And I don't even bet on horses, but I just like, oh, it's you know, analogy. Yeah. yeah, it gets you fired up. That stuff gets you fired up. <clears throat> Where are we at? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess a couple takeaways, right? So takeaways from Kenny, takeaways from the U.S., um, get yourself set up. Keep your eyes open for what's out there. There's tons of stuff coming your way. Mm-hmm. Get set up on these new accounts. Take advantage of their welcome bonuses. Holy shit. Three grand? Well, I think those were commissions paid out to a guy referring oh, okay. them to but the anyways, book. But that's like give. me saying, hey, buddy, sign up for this account. And they're like, yeah. you got 25 yeah. bucks. They're or giving whatever. out three grand. Referral anyways. bonus, uh, welcome bonus, all that stuff for new books. That's awesome. That's your kickstart to getting it going, right? So take advantage of that stuff. Um what else um implying yeah looking at those different odds looking at the new book systems looking for for juicy numbers on new books right Mm -hmm. um yeah i think those are some good takeaways for the american betters out there or you know for even us if there's some of them start to cross over right i'm sure that it'll yeah it'll pop the border soon so week ahead week ahead yeah i'm not uh i'm not sure what we want to talk about next week but we can talk about um one thing that we didn't was was getting your accounts kind of Keep breaking the book. Keep right? breaking the book will be a future could, topic yeah, for sure. I don't know if it'll be next about. week. Um, so anyways, we'll, we'll cook something good up. Um, so one of the biggest questions that I've had from the outside is, are you guys making money or hasn't COVID ruined sports? Or are you guys making money with COVID? And he's just like, yeah. So oh, last night we had Tuesday night football. We've had second time in 40 years or something yeah. like that, that that's happened. Um, Tonight, Wednesday night college football. Thursday night college football. Two games Friday night college football. I'm live streaming Friday. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. 
<laughs> just work all day. Oh. But yeah, no, it is awesome, right? Right, but, but what I'm seeing yeah. is opportunities. Friday night, I'm streaming live. Yeah. When I stream live, just so everyone's clear, that means you get to take exactly what I'm taking when I'm yeah. taking it. Saturday, I stream all day Probably for NCAA. Slate. Uh, full slate of football Sunday, and based on what we've seen from COVID, we might have a couple Monday or Tuesday games coming up again uh, in, in the coming week. Um, MLB playoffs, we have just freaking cleaned up on the Braves. Yeah. Um, we've really stayed away from the Astros, really uh, up, big time. Astros Rays series. Uh, if the favorites doing damage, we tend to not be, uh, sticking around too long. Um, so yeah, MLB playoffs. And then it's just really all American football. That's, that's what's up. And then yeah. next month, uh, the masters, which we always release picks for our UFC picks have done really, really well over the course of our inception at in play live. So we're always releasing a UFC card. So we always have that to look forward to going regularly more and more too, right? Yeah. Like fight Island. Yep, so, uh, so that's coming up on Saturday. Um, yeah, I think that does it. Um, 40% off, use the promo code Ritzker Podcast. You can join in play live today for 40% off if you use the promo code uh, Ritzker Podcast. And uh, we'd love to see you on the inside. That's where you get access to my daily picks, my live streams, our master class, and my personal mentorship, as well as the mentorship of people like Kenny and a whole bunch of other pros that are inside the group. Uh, yeah. We're, We've really created a culture where we are all geared towards winning money and we are all 100% in it to help each it's other fully so, that collaborative. Everyone, yeah. Yeah, so that everyone can do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, totally. That's been cool. Some guys sharing some info on different sports, different markets all across the world, which is epic, right, yeah. uh, as you look to build this out. So, yeah, cool. Well, again, check out the website, Instagram, Facebook, InPlay Live. Thanks for coming out. Thanks.